1850, a brutal storm ripped open the Orkney coast, exposing homes that are 5,000 years old, where stone beds, shelves, and even doors still stand exactly as they were left, a Neolithic world frozen in time. But Skara Bray's iconic furniture was not mere decor. New three-dimensional scans reveal it was a feat of engineering. Locked doors, watertight tanks, built-in drains, each element designed for survival, privacy, and ritual. If these prehistoric slabs could talk, what would they say about life, control, and ingenuity at the edge of the Atlantic? This is where the hidden story begins, and the real questions start. Skara Bray stands alone among prehistoric sites. Here, stone beds, dresses, and hearths have survived for over 4,000 years, dating back to between 3,200 BC and 2,200 BC. The village owes its extraordinary preservation to Orkney's relentless winds and shifting dunes, which buried the settlement beneath layers of sand and midden. This accidental protection kept the interiors sealed, shielding them from centuries of weather and human disturbance. Yet the same North Atlantic forces that once hid Skara Bray now threaten its survival. Since its discovery in 1850, when a violent storm tore open the coast and revealed the stone homes, waves and salt-laden winds have steadily eaten away at the fragile shoreline. Erosion is not just a distant threat, it is an urgent daily reality. Each winter storm brings the risk of losing irreplaceable details, the edges of a stone box, the original tool marks on a dresser, the subtle slope of a drain. Every new investigation is a race against time, driven by the knowledge that what survives today may be gone tomorrow. Stone dominates every corner of Skara Bray, not by accident, but by necessity. Orkney's old red sandstone, layered in thick, flat beds, splits cleanly along natural plains. This geological advantage offered Neolithic builders a material that could be shaped into slabs for walls, floors, and, most ingeniously, furniture. Timber, on the other hand, was a rare commodity in these northern islands. The treeless landscape left little choice but to rethink every aspect of construction. Instead of wooden beams or planks, families relied on stone, pried from outcrops just a short distance from the village. These slabs were strong, weatherproof, and durable enough to outlast centuries of storms. The result is a settlement where beds, dresses, and even water tanks are carved from the same rock as the walls themselves. This reliance on stone didn't just shape the look of Skara Bray, it set the stage for the built-in interiors that still puzzle and impress archaeologists today. Each house at Skara Bray follows a plan that is both simple and precise. The main room measures from 36 to 40 square meters, its thick stone walls set within deep mounds of compacted midden. This insulation shields the interior from Orkney's biting winds and helps stabilize temperatures year-round. The doorway, always low and narrow, opens into a single chamber where the eye is drawn straight ahead. Opposite the entrance stands the stone dresser, a deliberate focal point placed so that anyone crossing the threshold sees it first. On either side of a central hearth, box beds are fitted against the walls, their stone frames creating personal niches while still keeping sleepers close to the warmth. Covered passages branch out from the main room, their low ceilings and thick insulation further buffering the space from the cold. This arrangement is not random. Circulation through the house is tightly controlled, guiding movement and sight lines so that the dresser always commands attention. The result is a space that feels both open and organized, engineered for comfort, privacy, and social order. The stone dresser at Skara Bray has long been described as a shelf for everyday storage, but the latest research is rewriting that story. In 2025, a team led by Ness of Brodga scholars applied micro-CT scanning and residue analysis to dresser surfaces across the site. What they found challenges the old assumptions. Selective abrasion zones appear along the front edges of the uppermost shelves, with microscopic grooves and polish that match the repeated movement of coarse pottery. 
In some areas, traces of colored pigment, red ochre and a faint blue, cling to the stone, transferred from vessels that were set down and lifted away again and again. Yet the lower shelves remain almost untouched, their surfaces as sharp as the day they were carved. The pattern is not random. It suggests a deliberate choreography. Prized objects or decorated pots displayed at eye level handled often, while other shelves served more static roles or were left empty. Some researchers now argue that the dresser was not just a practical fixture, but a stage for ritual or communal display, a place where identity, memory, or status was made visible to every visitor who crossed the threshold. The debate continues. For every shelf with heavy wear, there is another left pristine, fueling arguments for both everyday and ceremonial use. The evidence from Scarab Ray's dresses reveals a complex interplay of function and meaning, written into the very surface of the stone. Box beds at Scarab Ray are more than simple sleeping platforms. Each one is framed by upright orthostats, heavy stone slabs set vertically into the floor, then filled with flat stones to create a rigid, compartmentalized structure. This design does more than provide a place to rest. The beds act as partitions, dividing the main chamber into zones and giving each resident a measure of personal space within the communal room. The slabs rise high enough to shelter sleepers from the worst of the drafts that slip through the low entrance, while the mass of stone stores and slowly releases heat from the central hearth. Underneath, the hollow created by the bed's construction offers storage for personal items, tools, or extra bedding making efficient use of every inch. Careful measurement reveals a subtle but consistent pattern. The left and right beds are rarely identical. In some houses, the right-hand bed is larger or more elaborately built, hinting at differences in status, age, or function among the inhabitants. This asymmetry is not random. It is repeated from house to house, suggesting a shared understanding of space and social order. The beds are always anchored into the house walls, their stability reinforced by the surrounding midden and the interlocking slabs. The engineering here is both practical and social, stone furniture that shapes how people live together, marking boundaries without closing off the room. Each bed is a testament to the Neolithic knack for turning geology into comfort, privacy and order, all in one enduring design. A low doorway, framed by thick stone, once stood as the only entrance to each Scarab Bray house. Here, the Neolithic builders added a detail that remains rare in prehistoric Europe. Bar holes cut directly into the stone jams. These horizontal slots, carved at practical arm height, are not decorative. Their purpose becomes clear when matched with the heavy slab doors found on site. Each door pivots in rebates, shallow sockets in both the floor and the lintel, allowing it to swing shut with surprising precision. Once closed, a transverse bar could be slid into the bar holes, bracing the door from within. The result is a lock, simple, effective, and durable enough to resist both wind and unwanted guests. This is engineering. Excavation sketches dating back to Child's 1928 field campaign document the geometry of these bar holes, and recent digital scans have confirmed their alignment. The fit is tight, the cut clean. While no original locking bars survive, experimental archaeology has stepped in. Local stonemason Magnus Spence, using measurements from the HES digital model, crafted replica doors and bars to test the system. The bars held fast, locking the stone doors with a margin of error under one centimeter, proof of Neolithic craftsmanship and planning. This is evidence. Security was not an afterthought. In a world where privacy, warmth, and protection from the elements mattered as much as defense, these bar holes reveal a layer of moving hardware built directly into the fabric of each home. The stone lock is both a technological solution and a statement. This house could be sealed, its people in possession safe inside, using nothing but the resources at hand. Inside Scarabray's stone houses, the so-called tanks, thin-walled boxes built into the floor, stand out for their precision. Each was lined with a careful layer of clay, pressed into every seam, then smoothed to create a watertight seal. Microanalysis of these clay joints, led by Ness of Brodgar specialists in 2024, reveals a mix of local subsoil and fired fragments chosen for their low permeability. 
The slabs themselves are fitted so closely that even after millennia, traces of damp clay and mineral residue still cling to the inner corners. These are not accidental features. The engineering points to a system designed for holding water, not just storing dry goods. Recent discoveries at Structure 12, nests of Brodga, show identical troughs that are also clay sealed with direct evidence of hot stone boiling, fractured pebbles, burnt residues, and lipid traces from marine foods. The parallels are clear. At Scarabray, the tank's wear patterns and residue signatures match those from Ness, supporting the idea that these boxes were central to food processing, likely for boiling shellfish or tubers, or for soaking and cleaning. The result is a picture of deliberate, communal wet work engineered into the very floor of each home. Beneath the stone floors of Scarabray, a network of covered channels runs between the houses, engineered to manage water and waste in a landscape where sanitation was a daily concern. These subfloor drains, built from fitted sandstone slabs and capped with flat stones, form a continuous system that links individual homes to a larger grid. The channels slope gently away from living spaces, directing runoff toward lower ground and ultimately out to the surrounding midden. In some houses, side branches connect directly to the clay-sealed tanks, suggesting a deliberate strategy for flushing or draining these features. The placement of certain boxes near drains has led researchers to reconsider their function, not just for food processing, but as possible latrines. Spatial analysis using recent 3D scans has mapped the full extent of these channels, revealing how they intersect beneath thresholds and passageways. The result is a cleanable, water-resistant floor plan, designed to keep living areas dry and hygienic. Even after five millennia, the logic of the drainage grid remains clear, a practical response to the challenges of daily life on Orkney's exposed coast. House 8 breaks the mold at Skara Bray. Unlike its neighbors, it lacks the familiar stone dresser and box beds. Instead, the interior tells a different story, one of intense heat and heavy use. The floor is scorched and fractured, with stones reddened by repeated exposure to fire. Along one wall, a primitive flue channels smoke and heat, a feature not found in the other dwellings. Chemical analysis of the hearth and surrounding floor has revealed high phosphate levels and traces of metal residues, signatures of bone processing and tool making rather than cooking meals or heating a living space. These clues point to specialized activity. House 8 functioned as a workshop, not a home. Here, stone and bone tools were likely shaped and hardened in the flames, the air thick with the smell of burning and the clang of work. This industrial outlier stands as proof that Skara Bray was more than just a cluster of family homes. It was a place where craft and domestic life intertwined, each leaving its mark in stone and ash historic environment. Scotland's high-resolution 3D scans have transformed the study of Skara Bray from careful guesswork to forensic precision. Using laser scanning and photogrammetry, engineers captured millions of data points across every stone surface, building a digital twin accurate to within 7 millimeters. This model does not just preserve the site in pixels, it lets specialists measure shelf rebates, door pivots, and tank seams without risking damage to the fragile originals. Stonemason Magnus Spence took these digital measurements straight to his workshop, cutting replica stone doors and bars to test the ancient locking system. The fit was nearly perfect, with real-world tolerances matching the scan data to within a fraction of a centimeter. For archaeologists, the digital model is more than a record. It is a working laboratory. Subtle shifts in the stonework, tracked over months and years, reveal where erosion is eating away at key features, warning conservation teams before the damage becomes irreversible. With every scan, Skara Bray's hidden engineering grows clearer and its future a little more secure. Old red sandstone, the bedrock of Orkney, splits naturally into flat slabs. Ideal for Neolithic builders who shaped each piece at the quarry's edge with stone hammers and antler picks. The heavier slabs were pried loose and dragged across short distances, then trimmed and dressed on site to fit the exact needs of each house. 
Construction started with deep foundation slots cut into the midden where upright orthostats were set and wedged with smaller stones for stability. Wall faces rose in double layers, packed with midden for insulation, while furniture, beds, dresses, tanks, was built as part of the walls themselves, locking the structure together. Clay sealed the seams of water boxes, pressed in by hand for a tight, lasting fit. The question of roofing remains open, but the best evidence points to a framework of driftwood or whalebone, overlaid with turf or seaweed, insulated further by banking up the midden. Each step reflects a hands-on logic. Use what's close, fit it tight, and build for life in a place where nothing is wasted. At its height, Scarabray supported a population estimated between 50 and 100 people, scattered across seven main houses. These numbers are not fixed. The ebb and flow of daily life meant that homes were sometimes empty, sometimes crowded, and always subject to change. Archaeological layers reveal a story of adaptation. Walls thickened with extra midden, beds rebuilt or replaced, tanks repurposed, and thresholds worn smooth by generations of feet. Not every house followed the same plan for its entire lifespan. Some were reworked to suit new needs, their interiors shifting as families grew, shrank, or changed roles. In this way, the fitted stone furniture became both a constant and a canvas, reflecting the choices and improvisations of its inhabitants. Yet, for all that has been uncovered, the full picture remains incomplete. The original use of certain features, the rhythm of daily routines, and the voices of those who lived here are still out of reach. Each new scan, each fresh layer of analysis, brings answers but also new questions, reminding us that Scara Bray is as much a living research site as an ancient monument. Today, three-dimensional scans reveal what Neolithic builders knew, design shapes survival. As rising seas threaten Orkney's coast, Scara Bray's engineered interiors remind us that resilience is not a relic, it's a necessity. The stone furniture endures not as a fossil, but as a blueprint for adapting to the world we inherit. Innovation, like these ancient slabs, leaves a legacy meant for tomorrow.